Welcome back everyone to another brief discussion on Generation 1 Pokemon. And after our last trip into A rank, I figured it'd be a great time to get back to our roots of niche OU monsters. And Persian is honestly what I consider to be the iconic example of niche OU monsters. Persian is like a shonen protagonist in that it's pretty great, very powerful in its own right, but objectively underpowered from the situations that they find themselves in. It does have a few traits that a ton of other Pokemon would love to have, but relying on those require pretty good prediction and planning on your part. But we're getting ahead of ourselves, because Persian does actually have a pretty solid foundation of an outstanding Pokemon. While most of our stats leave a lot to be desired, matching Stormy and Speed means only Jolteon and Alakazam are common threats that can outspeed you outright both of which are monsters that are incredibly physically frail. And while our attack stat is pretty meh, Stab Slash being a pretty safe move to just throw out there into the abyss counteracts that problem pretty effectively. Slash being in the move Persian will always be running, you actually have a pretty interesting set of moves to pick from for the remaining 3 slots. We get the 1-2 normal combo of Body Slam and Hyper Beam. Maybe they don't hit quite as hard as you like, even with Stab. But our 23% chance to crit, it's a pretty decent Hail Mary to bank on. We've all won games by betting on worse odds than that, that's for sure. And a crit body slam does out damage crit slash, plus gives you the chance to spread paralysis. Speaking of which, we also get Thunderbolt and Thunder, giving us a chance to scare out something like a weakened Starmie, as well as being the only viable option against something like Cloyster. Also, I've never made it happen. But if anyone can take out a buffed up Slowbro with a crit thunder, I'll look at it once and be like, whoa. Besides electric type attacks too, Bubble Beam is a pretty decent utility move, allowing you to both deal with Rhydon taking 4 times damage, and potentially fishing for a speed drop against a fast late game sweeper, like Tauros, or Tauros, or Tauros. These 6 moves admittedly more like 5 moves due to Thunder being way less used, make up the majority of Persian movesets, with the most common being Slash, Hyper Beam, Bubble Beam, and Thunderbolt. Which is a great set, it gives you a ton of utility, outspeeding the majority of the meta with great coverage, meaning you're always likely able to hit something with either a stab okay normal type move, or a mildly pathetic but super effective special attack. Really, only Executor and Gengar are super hard counters to this set, we just don't have the tools to reliably break through them. And while obviously other monsters will give it trouble too, at least we can put up a fight. Chansey for instance, can heal off almost all of Slash's damage, but could potentially fall to a crit hyper beam or an unlucky turn of paralysis. But what if we sacrifice some of that coverage to potentially stomp down on our just okay matchups even more? This is my Persian set and I love it. We trade in Thunderbolt with Screech, and let's talk about why we're doing this. For one, even though I said Thunderbolt and potentially Thunder will help us get past Slowbro, Stormy, and Cloyster, none of that was really true unfortunately. For Slowbro, the damage difference is negligible, unless you're running Thunder, which is again, far less reliable, just like my ex-wife. And for Stormy, it actually takes less damage from Thunderbolt and Slash, meaning you NEED Thunder to get a Guaranteed 3 hit KO, and I mean guaranteed in the most air quotey way that I can. We all know Stormy as one of the premier members of the middle three, and being just so absolutely wrecked by it is no joke, because sometimes good Stormy usage can just win you the game. And for Cloyster, while the damage threshold is much better, you're still not getting a 2 hit KO without Thunder, and Cloyster's explosion hits for 97% minimum if it feels like just giving us the middle finger. So, the electric type moves aren't that great, but Bubble Beam vs Rhydon, and I guess Golem, are actually really useful tools. Two hit KOs on both, one with a crit, which, like we said, are not uncommon for Persian. Plus you have that potential to stop a final sweeping monster by slowing it down before bringing in something else to finish it off. So, why Screech is the fourth move though? It doesn't affect Slash because Gen 1, only Body Slam and Hyper Beam. So what's the point? We could always run something like Toxic instead, to finish off your opponent's last Pokemon with something almost guaranteed to outspeed it, or Substitute to help mitigate paralysis or just stick around for an extra turn. 
Well, like I said before, the normal moveset struggles against Chansey without some luck. If Hyper Beam doesn't crit, you're opening yourself up to a Thunder Wave or damage, and Persian does not have that much bulk to be taking straight hits. But with Screech, Hyper Beam vs Chansey can do a one-hit KO. It's not a perfect combo, Screech is only 85% accurate, then 90% on Hyper Beam of course, but doing this successfully will do more damage than two slashes in a row. Plus, even if you die, taking a big bulky wall, like Snorlax or Slowbro or Cloyster, to half defense can really open them up to an actually strong physical attacker finishing them off. So yeah, this is my go-to kitty cat moveset, but there are unfortunately a few big problems with this strategy. It is super predictable. If you use Screech, and your ladder ranking is anything over like 1030, your opponent is going to know you won't be using Slash next turn. Meaning Body Slam and Hyper Beam are the only options you have, and if you've already revealed Bubble Beam, they know it's only one or the other, and it's almost certainly the Beam over the Slam. Which means, if you reveal with set too early, it's pretty much useless, making it a late game sweeper by default. But honestly, it can be a pretty scary one, as most normal teams won't have a great counter to a surprise Persian in the endgame. Avengers! Assemble. But, I think we might just be a smidge too nice. Persian is a C rank Pokemon after all, so clearly they have some issues. Well, a lot of issues, actually. <sighs> Let's get into it. Persian has a lot of fairly common counters. And we might as well start with the most common issue Persian faces. Paralysis. In case you haven't played RBYOU, and are for some reason treating this as your indoctrination point, that is pretty bad. Paralysis, sleep, and freeze are everywhere in Gen 1 overused. You could even say they're overused. But while your opponent can only induce Sleep and Freeze on one Pokemon each due to the respective clauses, Paralysis can fill the other four slots if you want pretty effectively. Which means a big brain, hypo chat opponent usually will save the good Sleep and the big chill for like, actually relevant not C tier Pokemon. Obviously Sleep is more intentionally spread than Freeze, but ideally, you want to just avoid blizzards and ice beams that won't result in a knockout against weaker monsters if you can avoid it, unless you already have something frozen. But while that means Persian usually won't find themselves completely incapacitated, Paralysis kinda does that anyway. It completely negates almost all of the good traits that we have previously talked about. Like I said, Persian isn't bulky at all. And having to go second, potentially losing its tone, it really declaws our cat's potential. We're taken down in two hits, by a ton of common moves in the meta, like Alakazam's Psychic and Rhydon's Earthquake, so missing one move, then getting smacked before you can go again, really is enough to take us out. And let's just check some sample teams for Pokemon that can use a sleep-inducing utility move. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty bad. And here's adding Pokemon that use Electric-type attacks commonly, that of course have the 10% chance to paralyze us, just because my luck can be awful sometimes. And now, just for emphasis, Monsters with Body Slime Paralysis Potential. Obviously Persian isn't affected by this one because of it being a normal type, but it's just to show that Paralysis is everywhere, and we just can't get much momentum with it. And if that wasn't bad enough, there are some other issues that we have to talk about. There's a ton of bad matchups with Persian, regardless of your Paralysis status. Snorlax is barely capable of going down to 3 slashes, while Body Slime will always take us down in 3 hits. Not to mention potential amnesia sets blasting us with boosted special moves. Even with monsters further down the ladder, Persian can't even consistently beat other C-type monsters like Moltres, or even fucking Machamp. Jesus, someone get this bro a drink before he needs to celebrate his first win in forever. There's a bunch of other little issues that Persian has too, honestly. Some are their fault, others are just things in the meta that kinda screw it over. And the big one is that if you want to use Persian and, like, actually win games, you're probably going to be running four normal-type Pokémon. And normal-type are great, don't get me wrong. I would never disrespect Senpai's tier ranking like that. But four of them really take away a lot of options for team composition. So, either you deal with that, or you drop one. Neither being exactly an ideal option for obvious reasons. On top of that, 
since Persian, especially the Persian moves that I prefer, is really required to be a late game sweeper, that's just another factor of team building that's stripped away from you. And one final thing that I want to talk about that's a little messed up, um yeah, you remember that amazing Screech Hyper Beam combo? Yeah, yeah, that's great, right? Remember that great crit chance? Yeah, yeah, these are both great, individually. Together, this can actually ruin your life. So now that we've gone over the good and the bad of Persian, what's the final diagnosis? Well, it's definitely a C-ranked Pokemon. Lots of potential, held back by a really unforgiving meta that just doesn't have room for another Tauros-esque Pokemon. It does have some good factors and some great potential matchups, but overall it's just lacking in too many facets to ever break into that top 13 turf. Generation 1 overused is a cold-hearted bitch, and I should know, I married one. But I guess it does what it can, to the best of its abilities, and has successfully carved its own little niche into the frankly unforgiving landscape that they can sort of exist in vaguely comfortably. And I can respect it for that at least. And that's what Persian can do in RBYOU. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch y'all next time.